Mr Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and um, thank you for inviting me uh, along to speak uh, this morning. Uh, rather surprised you want to hear from yet another politician after the uh, experience of the last uh, couple of uh, months and uh, I'm sure you share with me the view that election campaigns go on far too long these days and uh, but uh, we move on and uh, I say I thank you for inviting me and uh, particularly since I'm sort of a, an invader here from the north uh, n north and northeast Lincolnshire um, still regard themselves very much as a part of Lincolnshire and hate the fact that they're lumped in with Yorkshire and the Humber and all these other regions. We'd much rather uh, be part of the uh, great county and traditional and ancient county of Lincolnshire. So, but um, we, have, uh, we are very different in some ways from uh, the much more rural uh, uh, county area that's covered by the county council. Um, having said that, like all communities, we are they are based on the people who live in them. We as uh, politicians or church leaders or whatever can do what we can to help and sustain the, those communities, but it is the, ultimately the people. We can provide a framework, a structure, but the people will uh, determine how uh, the community functions and operates. Um, as politicians, we, we get uh, involved in... Um, producing local plans. Now, I'm sure you've all, you're a very educated audience, and I'm, I'm sure you all know that the local plan is in effect the foundation stone on the plans that determine the future uh, planning policies and to some extent the economic uh, uh, policies of um, the region. I, I've got here what is the draft local plan for North East Lincolnshire and it has all the usual grand titles you know there's a heading for people and prosperity and, and all this sort of thing. You'll all be very familiar with these sort of, of documents um, but ultimately it's, it's how we sort of um, frame and the, in, in some ways it's the ambitions we have for our community because yes we all want them to be uh, safer and stronger and all, all, all these sort of phrases that you will have heard um, you know day in day out uh, but attracting uh, investment into an area is of, is of course key North East Lincolnshire, I, sh I should mention in fairness to North Lincolnshire that my constituency actually takes in some of North Lincolnshire, but three quarters of it is in North East Lincolnshire. So I've tended to focus uh, on that today, particularly because in effect that's the industrial part of, uh, of the uh, county to a great extent. The, uh, it's one of the uh, strange things about the, the names we give to constituencies that uh, if, if you say, I, oh, I'm the MP for Cleethorpe, so immediately think of what is the premier uh, seaside resort of the East Coast. But he, uh, and apologies to Mablethorpe and Skegness and so on, but, you know, uh, uh, it, it, Cleethorpe's is the premier resort. Uh, and, uh, but, but in actual fact, the uh, constituency itself is basically an industrial one uh, with a rural hinterland. Uh, it, it takes in Immingham, Killingham and all the Humber Bank through to uh, the Humber Bridge. Uh, and uh, as you'll know, so we actually include two of the, c of the country's five oil refineries. We've got uh, a massive logistics uh, operation with both with the largest port measured by tonnage in the, in the country at, at uh, the Immingham Grimsby complex. And we've got um, oil, re I say oil refineries, we've got petrochemicals, we've obviously got fishing and tourism and so on. But, and then there's the rural hinterland. Uh, I, my constituency, as I keep repeating to people, actually runs from Wold Newton in the south to Barton on Humber in, in the north. So it, it is very uh, diverse. Uh, and it, there is a mixture, as in all uh, areas, both pros the prosperous areas, uh, and then what is loosely recalled sort of Middle England. And, and then there are, there are some real challenges. In, in actual fact, North East Lincolnshire contains two of the uh, poorest uh, measured by the various socio-economic indicators, two of the most deprived wards in, in the, uh, England. Um, and uh, it's, 
politically of course it's advantageous to be able to say you've got two of the most deprived wards therefore you need more money uh, from, from government but it's all it, it can also be actually a bit of a well no it's not exactly the best selling point is it if, if you if you if you're looking to attract people to the, to the area so it, it, it's very mixed and there are some real challenges in the east and west marsh areas of, of grimsby uh in in particular so um and, and then, of course, we, you, like everywhere applies here in Lincoln, you move outwards to the um, sometimes called the leafy suburbs uh, and so on. And those are the villages uh, in, in my constituency, such as Waltham and Humberston and uh, Laceby and Healing and so on. Uh, and here you've got them at uh, Nettleham and Skellingthorpe and, and, and so on. Um, these are the pl are places where most people uh, aspire to live, uh, particularly if you, uh, you know, you've uh, got to start a home in the centre of Grimsby or Lincoln and so on. The next stage after uh, so many years is to move on. And in actual fact, the big challenge uh, for the planners is the fact that most people want to go and live where the people who already live there don't want them to go and live, uh, which is usually called nimbyism. Uh, and it's a fact uh, that, you know, if, if you've managed to get a nice uh, um, semi or bungalow or whatever on the edge of Lincoln or, or Grimsby and so on, uh, and uh, it, yes, it's a new estate uh, and you were a newcomer or an intruder or whatever the, the locals may have thought of it at, at the time. Uh, and you don't want the field behind you uh, to be developed. Uh, and that is the real challenge, of, of course, of producing a local plan. I've got, I've got no end of... Uh, protest groups and residence groups in, in my constituency fighting uh, to avoid uh, the development in, uh, you know, an extension to Waltham or Healing or where, wherever it happens to be. And you can all relate to that, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, we all like our little piece of England, basically, and we don't want uh, others intruding on it. So how do um, you, you build a, a sort of sustainable uh, community within the context uh, of that it's in, uh, and uh, one where we all basically rub along together and despite the tensions that we see not only currently but uh, they flare up uh, at, at, from time to time on the whole here in, in Britain we do manage to rub along uh, with each other we've all, we're all um, grumble and complain about uh, uh, them over there or what, whatever. And, but in actual fact, as, as we see, uh, when you do get a tragedy such as we've witnessed in, in recent weeks, communities can come together and uh, those barriers immediately can, can fall. The challenge, of course, is then to ensure that uh, those communities rebuild uh, and, the, and the sense of community is retained. Um, so I, I was talking about attracting investment and of course that, that, that is key and although in, in, in my constituency uh, employment has never been so high and obviously that means that unemployment is, is at its lowest for a generation and that is, is good news to some extent but of course a lot of the we are a low wage economy to a considerable extent and that causes no end of uh, difficulties and problems. And attracting new uh, investment into the area is, is uh, we've had some success, but it is uh, quite difficult. Uh, everything to a great extent in the Grimsby Cleethorpes area hung around the fishing industry until the uh, 1970s and 80s. And my father worked on uh, Grimsby Docks, I can remember as a lad going down there, and you could quite literally jump from trawler to trawler when they were moored on, on, on the north wall. And uh, that, could, that was destroyed by, I won't go into the sort of politics of it, but for, what, for, for reasons which are, na are now history, um, that particular f community um, was destroyed. It had been destroyed in some senses before the fall of the fishing industry because the fishing industry was uh, the community that uh, uh, lived on that was in the East Marsh area the one that I mentioned earlier has been particularly uh, deprived nowadays and there had been a massive slum cl uh, clearance program there in the late 50s and 60s and that's something you know which we can all 
uh, say was was wonderful and uh, yes it was but it, it lifted that community to a great extent and moved them to a council estate on the edge of town and uh, that has I don't think I've been too, sort of too critical to say that community has never pulled together in the same way as the community that it was when it was in, in the East Marsh and that has happened of course in many towns and cities uh, when uh, if, if you came out of school age 14 or 15 as many did in the 40s and 50s and so on you knew you could still get a job down on the docks uh, and it was it's been the same in Scunthorpe surrounding the steel industry in other places shipbuilding or whatever was the key industry and it mopped up all of that uh, young uh, young all those young men coming out of school who perhaps hadn't got the necessary qualifications to do uh, many of the other jobs which were beginning to uh, emerge so uh, we had those challenges then yes everybody said yes of course it's wonderful that we're getting rid of all these uh, uh, 19th century properties and people living in you know two up two down back to back and sharing the toilet down at the end of the, pa the passage and all that sort of thing that that was wonderful but it did destroy perhaps that's too strong a word but it did uh, cause problems within those communities as they were moved into what actually were quite remote parts uh, of uh, certainly of Grimsby and I'm sure that applies equally to uh, to other towns and cities. Um, we then uh, had the, uh, the, the, the situation, uh, and it's never been truly um, uh, dealt with. We, we then have the sort of effect that having moved those proper uh, people from uh, one area, what do we do with that area? And in Grimsby, there, were some, uh, there was some uh, new uh, council housing and I'm very much uh, in favour of council housing, it, it has to be said, and I think that's a programme that, that uh, any conservative government should, should uh, be supportive of, uh, just uh, as much as, uh, as a Labour or, or Lib Dem administration. The, you know, um, I say that in part perhaps because I was brought up on a council estate in Grimsby, so I'm one of, one of uh, these council house Tories who uh, seem to um, be used by the party at various times to promote uh, their, their inclusiveness, but in actual fact there, was, you know, um, there are far more of us than uh, meets the eye, but I won't get too political this morning. Um, so, so, so there, there, there are many ch challenges, and, and in, at that time we, we then had this massive rebuilding program during the 1960s, not only moving the people but also uh, building a c accommodation, which I, in the case of Grimsby included six high-rise blocks of flats, which we all then said, oh, there's, there's no community feeling and so on and so forth. But in the last 12 to 18 months, when the, shoreline housing as it now is uh, have wanted to move those we've we've had a great upsurge of, of people saying are oh, you going to destroy the our little community um, so I think that goes back to my original point that it is the people that make uh, the, the community rather than um, the sort of physical surroundings but physical sur surroundings are important and we now need to uh, regenerate so many parts of, of Grimsby, Scunthorpe and, and, and so on and, and, and many of our industrial town, towns and we've seen in during the, the course of the uh, last sort of couple of years from a political point of view how those uh, run down, uh, you put that in, in quotes, towns uh, have hit back as it were uh, and you know that was very much to the fore during the referendum debates uh, last year and we've seen it again uh, during the, the, the general election. How that will um, move on in, in a political sense, I, uh, well, we all watch with interest, I think, particularly those of us who have got a vested interest in, in, in it. But um, there are real challenges as, as to how we, we, we move forward, attract investment. The, the Grimsby Cleethorpes area, the future has, has, has been sort of identified as the offshore renewable. Uh, sector the, uh, and, and that has in, and that is important but the reality is that even after sort of eight ten years of massive investment and, and it has to be said massive uh, 
taxpayer su subsidy either through you, what uh, through the uh, charges on on your energy bills or direct funding through various funds such as regional growth funds and all all these sort of things um, despite all that investment there are still only roughly 800 jobs in the Grimsby Cleethorpes area in the renewable sector and that's great uh, that's 800 jobs that weren't there five or six years ago and many of them are highly skilled unfortunately some of the highly skilled uh, ones are still taken by uh, um, people coming over from Denmark, Germany and the like. Dong Energy is one of the big investors and, and that's great and they, they are a great company who are beginning to play a real role within our community in the sense of the, the support that they give to a whole host of um, voluntary and charitable organisations and so on. But uh, it, is, it is a fact that, that Dong Energy are in effect the Danish government. They are 80% owned by the Danish government, and why why would why would the Danish government want to give um, uh, work to uh, our people when rather than ship their own highly skilled engineers across? You know, it is a it is a a, a challenge for us. Yes, we are creating uh, many of those jobs and uh, all the skills for those jobs. Uh, both uh, here in, in Lincoln and uh, at the Grimsby Institute at the Catch facility out at, uh, at Stallingborough. Uh, we've got the University Technical College at uh, Scunthorpe. So we are uh, preparing ourselves in terms of getting our young people skilled up to take those jobs. Um, and then the challenge is getting, actually getting them into those jobs. Uh, but hopefully uh, that, will, uh, that will change. So um, I've got I've, I've, I, I printed off last night the bits of the the local plan and uh, around, but I I think perhaps um, I leave that to more experts to uh, actually talk about because if we're looking to build sustainable uh, communities uh, that have a real heart. Um, it's not just a matter of, of, of planning uh, of the planners or whoever coming up with that. It, it is a, a whole community uh, uh, production, as it were, the, the, the local plan. Sadly, um, most people, it, it passes them by, and why shouldn't, why shouldn't it, <laughs> in one sense? Um, we, uh, governments, local authorities are very fond of consultations, but I have to say, during my 26 years as a local councillor it was the same people who responded to all of those consultations uh, and in all honesty they were not representative of the community as a whole they passionate people genuine people who wanted to to play a part in in producing a community that uh, you know, genuinely benefited and worked for everyone but um, it, it does pass people by and I think it's incumbent on those of us who hold elected office uh, and in, the, in this instance particularly at local level it has to be said that, that we do all we can to in, include as many people as possible. The reality of course is that if you go if you're going to build a, a motorway through a village uh, you will have a packed uh, village hall uh, um, immediately there will immediately spring up uh, an action group to deal with it and as I mentioned earlier that applies to any little development uh, in in our suburban villages and understandably so uh, but if you hold a meeting uh, to discuss the the local plan and you invite the MP along and the leader of the council and the chairman of the planning committee and, and, and so on and so forth there will be six other people there uh, and, and you know, one of them may well be the uh, I don't know the the, the the parish priest perhaps, and uh, uh, the leader of the action group for this, and and and, uh, and it is a real challenge. And I think, as I say, I think it's incumbent on 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 uh, local elected representatives to do all they can. And believe me, I speak from experience. I know that is a challenge. So. Um, I think my final message, am, am I running out of time? Yes. And I, I was asked when I came in, did I want to, was I doing a PowerPoint presentation, which most certainly not. Uh, and and, and, and I, I said, I usually look around after three or four minutes and can tell people are getting rather restless. And then I, I wrap up. So I, I hope I've given you 
hope I've given you a few thoughts from the political perspective. And, you know, uh, I'll put in a good word for politicians here. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't I? But most politicians, you know, and I speak, you know, of those representing all parties, do genuinely want to help their communities. And I think it's, you know, we... Uh, we get a bad press, which is fair enough. We have done through the centuries, not, so nothing will change there. But uh, you know, our role, certainly the, the MP's role, the phrase I often use is we can be a megaphone for the local community. The local community can often say we're not being listened to, we're not being heard, and so on. Um, all I would say to those people is go along to your member of parliament and say we're not being heard it and it's that MP's job to make sure that they are heard be it by the chief executive of the council or the hospital trust or the chief constable or all these people who influence decisions in in our community and rather than be fobbed off uh, by getting a letter from some correspondence clerk you will get a response from the, the decision maker you might not like the response but I think on the whole, you've got, I, f I find that people say, well, I've now had the explanation. I don't like it, but I can see how um, it was arrived at and, and so on. So um, my plea here would be, as, as you go out into your communities with the various organisations that you represent, make use of your elected representatives to, uh, to as much extent. And yes, put, put a bit of pressure on them to uh, um, you know, put uh, your point of view. And uh, with that, I'll call it a day and hopefully have uh, uh, been moderately interesting anyway. <laughs>